All right. <clears throat> Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And uh, once again, it's another video. It comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Raka Kwadash. All praises and glories definitely do. So once again, uh, I'm in my. Uh, favorite spot that I like to come to when I uh, go do my riding um, so far I'm up to uh, uh, 30 miles 15 there 15 back I'm almost at my uh, uh, destination and I think I got a video in me that I think will be edifying to you brothers and uh, you sisters out there of the household of faith a uh, couple of things inspired me to do this video. Oh, by the way, um, if you decide to get into the biking, uh, you should carry some uh, electrolytes, you know, uh, something to drink. Like, let me show you what I'm talking about. Like, if you look here, okay, I usually carry a a flask and inside of here I carry some uh, electrolyte, wa uh, electrolyte water in there okay because uh, you know when you uh, bike riding you you expel a lot of uh, energy <laughs> so uh, you want to replace that as you're expelling the energy you want to replace it with some electrolyte water and I also in my bag you know, I carry a knapsack when I uh, go riding. You know, I carry a, what do you call that, a little bowl. And uh, I put some berries in there, you know. Gives me the energy to do what I got to do. So these are just little uh, hacks, little tips. Little hacks, little tips for you when, if you decide to. Uh, get your form of exercise by uh, bike riding. If you, you know, you find yourself a trail, and uh, you know you hit that trail, and you do your riding, which is what I do. You know, you can see <laughs> uh, sweating up a storm. You know, which is a good thing. You know, try to stay in uh, some kind of shape. <laughs> All right. So enough of that. You know, I'm just saying these saying these words to inspire you brothers and sisters out there that watch my videos. That, uh, you know, this knowledge, this truth keeps your mind in shape, but you got to keep your body in shape too. You got you to gotta watch what you eat. You know, we, you know, we uh, tell you about these things. Anyway, um, what inspired me to do this video was, uh, like I said, a couple of things. Uh, I was watching a video. I watched this guy. Um, he's one of one of those dudes from the Manosphere. Uh, he goes by the title, the YouTube handle of uh, King Richards. He's out. He's 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 from uh, the UK. He's out there in the UK, and he usually has a panel of silly women, and he's basically interviewing them. You know. And it makes for good watching, you know. It's the same thing that uh, these guys from Miami, uh, Fresh and Fit, the same thing that they do. His format is pretty much the same. And uh, really, when you watch uh, videos like that, it's, it shows you just how silly these women are. These women are really, really silly. <laughs> They're very silly. Anyway, um... He had one particular woman, this guy, uh, King Richards. I forgot the name of the uh, video I was watching. And uh, he had this particular chick on there. She was super duper proud. I mean, I don't know who's more proud, the women over in the UK, so-called black women, because that's mostly who King Richards brings on his show, mostly so-called black women. Every now and then he has an Edomite here, 
so-called Arab there. You know, if you watch his uh, format, you're pretty familiar with the women that he usually ha has on the show interviewing. But it's mostly so-called black women. Now, I don't know who's more proud or who's more delusional, the so-called black woman over here in America or the so-called black woman over there in England. And to think at one time, man, I, I, I used to think, yeah, I should go back to England and <laughs> maybe I'll find me a decent woman there. <laughs> nah, that's, that's, that's okay. From what I've seen over there in the UK, you could forget about that, man. Anyway, um, besides, I'm, I'm supposed to be here to prophesy the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. I'm supposed to be in Babylon until hopefully by the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, I'm able to see this place total, be totally destroyed by Yahweh Shai when he comes back. See, I want to be, I, I forgot who I was talking to, one of the brothers I was talking to. I think it might have been, might have been Bishop Sakuran. I want to be in the heat of the battle when it goes down, you know, and the heat of the battle is going to take place right here in America, Babylon the Great. If it be the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, I want to see the destruction of this place, man. All right, so the hell with going back to England and all of that. You know, you got brothers over there in England, you know, man's goings of the Lord, but Yahweh Bashim Yahusha made sure I was here, here, cheer, right in Babylon, hopefully to see the total destruction of this place. Plus, I'm working in tandem with Elder Pastor, one of the, one of, I have to say it, one of the greatest men on the planet Earth right now. Those of you who don't like it, oh well. But that man is highly favored in the sight of Yahweh Bashim uh doing the work that he does. And I've been blessed immensely to be with him, to help him in the ministry. So, I'm where I need to be. Anyway, going back to Mr. King Richards and his show he had some chick and the chick was really pissing me off with uh, the shit that she was saying she acted like, I mean she acted like her shit does not stink you know she had all this make, all this fake up they call it makeup, we call it those of us in the know, we call it fake up she had all that fake up on her face talking all kind of crap right, all kind of delusional crap talking about she's a goddess and men ought to worship her and and a statement that King Richard King Richards King Richards made that I said man I think I gotta do a video about this because what he said now some some of the times he makes statements he has no idea it's in the scriptures it's in the Bible you know he has some kind of uh, insight he just doesn't know the truth I'm talking about King Richards it, it, intelligent guy I have to say, you know, an intelligent guy, right? And I'm pretty sure, the Spirit is telling me, I'm pretty sure he watches us, in particular GMS. I'm pretty sure he watches our videos, okay? And um, he made a statement while that chick was talking. He made a statement. He said, he said, you, uh, no, how did he say it? He said, the humbling is coming. He didn't say for you women, but he said, you know, you women are... Uh, delusional however he said it but the one part he said that I remembered was the part he said the humbling is coming in other words there's a great humbling coming for you women and he has no idea just how right he is especially according to the Holy Scriptures the first scripture that jumped into my mind was Isaiah 32 and 9 where it says uh, many days and years shall ye be troubled ye careless women tremble ye women that are at ease that's from Isaiah 32 uh, the ninth verse to the 11th verse so the message of this video is for you women out there now you sisters that are humble and you and you trying to do the right thing I'm not talking about you you're you're exempt okay but all you proud women out there you're gassed up on uh, uh, the you know uh, what do you call it the uh, What's it called again? The word kind of escaped me. You're a feminist. You're gassed up on feminism, which fe it's, it's it's really a misnomer because being a feminist, you're acting like a like a male. You're acting like a man. 
you're acting out of uh, out of masculine energy, not feminine energy. So it's kind of strange that they call it they call it feminist, being a feminist. All right, which be, a, a, a woman that's feminine is uh, she's dainty, she's humble. You know, she's uh, uh, quiet. You know, she's feminine. She she's in the 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 you know the nature of a woman you know she's uh, submissive right submissive especially to her man her husband so why they call it feminist it doesn't make any sense to me because a feminist is operating in some masculine energy not feminine energy anyway all you women that are feminists we're gonna go with the word you know you believe that you are superior to a man you know and that a man should worship you like King Richard said the great humbling is coming okay one of the things or there's really many things that gas you women up one of the main things is the fact that the state has given you power over the man and you don't realize that the state gave you power over the man to destroy the relationship between man and woman. I've done plenty of videos on that. That's one of the things that the top wicked elite want. That's one of the planks of uh, the Illuminati state, which is to destroy the relationship between man and woman. Okay? Um, they want the women to be like the men. They want the men to be basically like, like the woman. <laughs> All right? Which brings destruction of... Uh, the relationship between man and woman brings the destruction of the family. Okay, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, what's his name? Um, Karl Marx, which that's not his his real name. He was hired by the uh, Rothschilds to uh, pen the the uh, manifest, the uh, Communist Manifesto. Even though there's some accounts that said that he never really wrote it, his name was just used. Uh, to be put on the Communist Manifesto, but he never really wrote it. But anyway, he is quoted as saying uh, one of the things they want is abolition of the family. Now, what creates the family structure? A man and a woman. A man gets together for a woman. They meet. They so-called, quote-unquote, fall in love, whatever, and they decide to raise a family. They have children. So one of the planks of the Communist Manifesto is abolition of the family. So how do you destroy the family? Well, you destroy the relationship between man and woman. And that's where feminism comes in. Because that's what feminism does. Because ain't no real man going to tolerate a woman that's a feminist. A woman that believes that, a, a, a man, that she's superior to a man. No real man is going to tolerate a woman like that. Okay? So, like my man said, the, the great humbling is coming. So when these... When the state, let's start with the state that gives you your power. You, you so-called feminists out there, you're really getting your power from the state. You know, you claim you hate men, but you're getting your, you're getting your power from men. Men that control the state. But there's an ulterior motive why they're giving you that power. They're giving you that power to bring chaos so that based upon that chaos, they can bring in the order. It's just another form of auto av chaos, order through chaos. And a, and a woman, if, if you look at the nature of a woman, the nature of a woman is to, is to be chaotic. The woman really represents chaos. If she doesn't have order, if she doesn't have discipline, that's why either her father or her husband is supposed to be watching over her. Okay? So when you have these women out there gallivanting around, doing whatever the hell they want to do, Nine times out of ten, they get into what uh, what will bring chaos. Chaos to the family, chaos in general. And the wicked elite of Esau, they know this. So they're using these women to bring the chaos so that, based upon that, they can bring their order. All right? As it is written, we, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. The, can the woman be used to bring chaos? Absolutely especially when you arm her with, with power. And that goes back to the prophecy in uh, Jeremiah, uh, the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, where it says, 
a woman shall compass a man. Now, when you look up that word compass, and I've done videos on this in the, in the past, when you look up the word uh, compass, it means to go around a man's authority. You can look it up for yourself. Compass a man, meaning go around his authority. That's why, if you notice, right, these women are the apex, the zenith of their pride. I mean, they're super proud, as demonstrated on that show. So much so that my man, King Richards, he had to say, look, the humbling is coming. He, he doesn't, I don't think he has an idea of how profound that statement he made, because that is totally uh, biblical. And I just quoted a scripture at you, Isaiah 32 and 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. Now, when you look at the, the, in the Red Bible, when you look at the column, the precept column where it says many years, it says days above a year. So that makes sense because I don't think we have many years left in this society. So when the state that gives you women your power, when, that, when the state crumbles, right, it goes into a totalitarian type state, you women are going to realize that you have been used. You have been used by the wicked elite to create the chaos. And based upon the chaos, now here comes the order. A totalitarian system. Where not just men are totally controlled, but you women as well. The, the same state that gave you all that freedom to, to, to do all the madness that you're doing. Say all the madness that you, you're saying. You know, to, 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 uh, to glorify whoredom. That same state is now going to turn against you and you're going to be punished for being free you're going to be punished for being a whore okay they showed you that in the movie um uh handmaiden's tale the, the one made back in 1990 there's a scene where the women that were deemed fit most of the women they were they were uh, turned away because they were not fit their, their wombs were polluted you know they were not fit they were unfit so the women all you got to do is watch that movie, uh, Handmaid, Handmaiden, Handmaiden, or is it Handmaids? I'm sorry. Handmaid's Tale, 1990, the one that came out in 1990. Now, we always reference these movies because that's where the wicked elite put their uh, hidden messages in these movies. A lot of these movies, yeah, sure, they're for entertainment, but a lot of these movies, especially with the topic of... Uh, New World Order, you know, uh, uh, Illuminati and, and stuff like that. They always put the hidden messages in those movies. And you just have to be in the know to, uh, um, to, to uh, glean those messages, to, to, to pick them out. So, again, there's a scene in the movie, uh, Handmaid's Tale, where the women that were fit, the women that were chosen to be handmaids, and you should know what a handmaid is. That's a woman that give, uh, brings uh, forth children for a man who has a wife that cannot have children. Uh, and that's an old custom. Okay, that custom goes back to the book of Genesis. As a matter of fact, our forefather, uh, Jacob, he had, uh, he had wives that had handmaids. Case in point, um, his wife, Lear, had... Uh, she had a couple of handmaids. I think it was Bilhah and, uh, and, and Zilpah. Bilhah and Zilpah, I think. Uh, a brother can uh, fact check that for me and put it in the, excuse me, in the comment section. Okay, so that's an old custom. Handmaids. All right. Um, uh, you had Abraham who had Sarah. Sarah had a handmaid. Hagar. Oh, Hagar. Right, Haggai was uh, uh, Sarah's handmaid, all right, which Sarah didn't particularly like her. They were always getting into it. <laughs> they, were going, they were going back and forth, all right? So that movie, Handmaid's Tale, is based upon an old concept. So again, going back to that scene, there's a scene where um, it was sorting through the women and the you know the, the the women that were chosen you had the one uh, i forgot what her title is the, the woman that overseered the other woman the other women she goes uh, uh you women are the, you women are the lucky ones you you were chosen because your womb is pure something like that how, whatever however she was saying it 
Then she said, the other women that were not chosen, they were no good. They were sluts. They were whores. It's a, it's a pretty powerful scene. Okay? It's in the movie Handmaid's Tale, made back in 1990. So that lets you know right there, like King Richard said, the humbling is coming. Right now, you know, you women are at ease. With, you know, you, you have the, the state put these uh, symbols in front of you, like Cardi B and these degenerate symbols, uh, Lizzo. You think that's going to last forever, honestly? Do you really think that that degeneracy, that degeneracy is going to last forever? The answer is no. The great humbling is coming. All right? And if you look at it, it's coming in both ways. Esau, you know, he's not going to tolerate, when the New World Order is totally established, he's not going to tolerate whoredom from you women in the New World Order. Okay? And... To go deeper when Yahweh Shai comes, because Esau is going to be allowed to enjoy his New World Order for this much. Because you go in the book of uh, Job, it speaks about the Lord will reign upon him while he is eaten. So when Esau is about to put the finishing touches on his New World Order, that's when Yahweh Shai is going to come and destroy his society, destroy his kingdom. Now, you think in our kingdom, this is the other side. You think in our kingdom, whoredom is going to be tolerated? The answer is no. So the great humbling is coming. The great culling, look that word up, C-U-L-L-I-N-G. The great culling of you women is coming. A lot of you women are going to be put to death, man. Because just like the scene in The Handmaid's Tale, you're not good enough. You're too polluted. You're too far gone. A lot of you women are covered with all kind of tattoos and you have become, especially you so-called black women, you have become total degenerates. And right now you see, you, you, like Cindy Lauper said in the song, girls just want to have fun. Right now you, you know, you're having fun, you're enjoying yourself, but the fun is coming to an end. The, the great humbling is coming for you women. The great humbling is coming for you women. Okay? And you seem to have this attitude that men were created for you. No, we weren't created for you. You were created for us. That's, that's another thing, too. You women, are, your pride is going to be taken down a whole lot of notches. Okay? You're going to realize that you, you women, you were created for us. For us. Okay? We weren't created for you. 1 Corinthians 11 chapter breaks it down. The Apostle Paul had to tell these, these dumbass Corinthians, the Corinthian men, all right, which they, they stayed going off. That's why I always said the longest letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the different Israelite groups was to the Corinthians. The dumb Corinthian men were setting up women to be over men. The Apostle Paul had to check them on that. Okay, the Apostle Paul, now the point I'm making is in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, the Apostle Paul said the man was not created for the woman, but the woman was created for the man. Now, you average women out there, you don't, you don't believe that. You know, if, if uh, brother way to say that to you, that feminism nonsense of that, that's in your head kicks in. You should have heard how that woman was talking on, on the show. The show that, uh, you know, King Richard's podcast. I mean, the woman was talking as if, as if she's, she's the goddess of the universe. And every man must bow down to her. I mean, you women are totally deluded, man. But like my man said, the great humbling is coming. Your, your pride is going to be taking down a whole lot of notches, okay? You're going to find out once and for all that you were created for us. We weren't created for you. We were created to worship you. How about Shimei Shai? And you were created to worship us, us men. You women out there, you were created to worship us men. We are your lords. In 1 Peter, the third chapter, it gives you uh, a clue where, where Sarah called Abraham Lord. That's First Peter, the third chapter. I think it's around the eighth verse. Again, everything I mentioned, you brothers out there, please put it in the comment section so everyone can be edified that watches this video. You know, I do these videos for uh, edification, okay? And you men as well as you women in this thing of ours. But you're going to go back to calling us, and you're going to do it in Hebrew. You're going to go back to calling us Lord. 
us men. Okay, even in the old uh, movies, back in the day, uh, the old um, movies that were made concerning the era of um, uh, the era of uh, the so-called uh, Dark Ages, right? With the knights, the knights of the Round Table, that era. Uh, women back then called men, particularly over there in Europe, England, particularly, women called men back then Lord. Did I please thee, my Lord? Okay, all you have to do is watch those movies and you'll, you'll hear a woman address a man as my Lord. Those days are gone. And this is what is meant by the scripture, a woman shall compass a man. In other words, a woman will not show the average man respect. You know, the average man, he got to jump through, through firebrands to get with you women. It's all about you now. The average man got to put on a show to please you women. And, and, and then you might decide if you're going to give him the box. And you know what I mean by the box. This is something you've given to, to the most degenerate man out there. But a decent guy, right, a decent man, he has to jump through through firebrands just to get with you all right that's got to change you women have entirely too much power and that's why this society is going in going to hell in a handbasket as they say and one of the reasons why is because you women have entirely too much power too much freedom the scripture even says it give not a woman uh how's it go allow not a woman to gather abroad roughly paraphrasing that scripture okay the apostle paul said the woman is supposed to be keepers at home okay but these women are all out in the open they're out they're out on the streets you know uh, causing chaos on the roads driving multiple accidents there's certain countries where they don't allow women to drive on the roads i believe afghanistan is one of them okay and there's a reason for that you know, most of your accidents on the street are caused by your women. But what the craziest thing about it is you have the lowest insurance. So that tells me, head is you're causing the most accidents, but you have the lowest insurance. So that tells me that, that the, the wicked elite, they want the chaos. Because out of the chaos, they can bring order. You see? You should have the highest insurance because you're causing the most accidents. And if a man, now check it out, if a man has a few accidents on his record, his, his premium, premium shoots through the roof. His insurance premium goes up. But meanwhile, a woman, she can get away. I've seen women get away with, literally with murder. A woman can commit, this is, this is how much power these women have in this society. They can literally commit murder and get away with it. All of that shit got to come to an end, man. The great humbling is coming. You women think you're invincible. Hey, you know uh, Michael Jackson, right? Right before the Lord took him down, you know, out of, um, you know, took him down off his high horse, he did an album. You know what he called the album? Invincible. I think that was the last album he did before he went. Phew. You know the uh, the, um, uh, the the rumor of him molesting children that came out on a worldwide scale and totally destroyed him. He never recovered from that. He was never the same. I remember back in 1983, 1984, Michael Jackson was a god. That's all you heard on the radio. When, when the Thriller album dropped, all you heard was those be, uh, Billie Jean, Beat It, those songs that came from the Thriller album. In that year, 1983, 84, I would have to say that was the peak of Michael Jackson's fame. He was a god. Okay? And you see what happened to him, right? Fast forward into the future, he's, the Lord started bringing him down. Okay? He did an album called Invincible. The Lord used that scandal of him being a child molester. The Lord used that scandal to bring him down. And he is never the same again. The same thing with Bill Cosby. In the early 80s, Bill Cosby was like a god he had that show the cosby show that was like the top running show on nbc single-handedly he put nbc on the map with it with his show the cosby show 
Can you imagine the commercials that were running during that show? The commercials that were running during that show, man, whoever, you know, them people got paid because damn near everybody watched that show. So I can only imagine just to get a commercial spot on that show, probably talking close to a million dollars, maybe less. One can, uh, you, you brothers can fact check it. How much would it cost to get a commercial spot during the uh, airing of the Cosby show? I guarantee you it had to be a lot of money because you was going to make a lot of money because a lot of people were going to see it, your commercial. So the point I'm making is I gave you two examples of people that were on top and they came crashing down. So what make you women think you're any different? The great humbling is coming and we're living in that time. When this society collapses, all these, these, uh, these government programs that you women have access to via the state all these programs are going to be cut off okay there's a scripture in the same book isaiah where it says you women shall lament for the teats the, uh, the word teats is uh t t e a t s the teats which is nourishment so that's a metaphor for all these different government programs that take care of you and your children all these programs are going to be cut off Okay, it's going to be every man for himself. All right? And that right there is going to humble a lot of you women. A lot of you women, you won't have the money that you have now to spend free and easy, to spend carelessly. You won't have that money anymore. Okay? To, to get your, your hair did and your nails done. That's how you say it. <laughs> get these weaves and these wigs and... You know, you live in that pleasurable life, that pleasure cruise that you're on is about to come to an end. The ship is about to be shipwrecked. You on that pleasure cruise, it's all about your hair. Some of you wearing the nails, you look, look like look like bear claws. I mean, you women just don't know how silly you look. And then you're covered with these tattoos. You got these bear claws for nails. One, one has to wonder how the hell do you wipe your ass after a shit? Well, a lot of you women, you don't, you don't eat right, so you don't go to the bathroom like you should. That's why, you, 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 you know, around the midsection, you're all bloated. Because you're not, you're not getting a good bowel movement. So I can see why you can have those, those claw, bare claws. Because, you, you know, you, you, don't, you barely have a bowel movement, so you don't, you don't have to wipe your ass. <laughs> and if you do have one, one can imagine how nasty your ass would be I, I have to go there because that's just common sense you you see a woman with bear claws you have to wonder how how the hell does she wipe her ass uh how the hell does she wipe her ass after a bowel movement <laughs> you have to wonder about that man and in america right they they don't um there's something called a bidet other countries they have those those things that it's called a bidet this is where uh, it's a a jet of water that shoots up your ass and washes your ass after you use a, after you use the, the the bathroom, which make which makes good sense. No, they don't have those really over here in America. They just have a, a, a toilet and that's it. You have to rely on paper towel to wipe your bottom after a bowel movement. But over there in the Euro European countries, they have something called a bidet. Okay, so. Yeah, you can tell, man. I've been thinking about these things, you know. You can, you can. <laughs> That's why we tell you about these women. These women are nasty, you know. They, uh, uh, their hygiene is, is despicable. Well, like the video Elder Apostol said, the, the so-called black woman in particular has become a real degenerate. But the humbling is coming. Okay, the great humbling is coming. All right, so... That's just something for you women out there to think about. Now, you sisters, you already know. You already know that all hell is getting ready to break loose. Like I said, when this society goes down, when these cities are trouble zones, because the scriptures tell us the cities are going to be troubled. You're going to have your martial law. You're going to have your roadblocks. You're going to have your military roadblocks. You're going to have your curfews, all of that. And it's going to seem like all of, all of it is going to happen damn near overnight. All right, overnight, this society is going to crumble, overnight. And a lot, a lot of you women, 
a lot of men are just going to brush you off because of how you be behaved with men. Okay? With your super duper pride. A lot of men are just going to be like, nah, you know, what about uh, certain statements you made? I can do bad by myself. I don't need a man. Uh, you know, nothing, there's nothing a man can do for me. Blah, 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 blah. All that feminist rhetoric, all that feminist crap you were spewing. Men are going to be like, yeah, well, oh, I'm strong. How could I forget that one? I'm strong and independent. You can't even say strong. You say strong and independent. So men are going to throw that back in your face. When this society crumbles, collapses, and it's totally obvious, painfully obvious, you women are on your own. Now you got to fend for yourself. You, uh, a lot of you going to try to come. You, you're going to try to come to men humble and shit and all that. And men are going to throw that back in your face. Well, what happened to you being strong and independent? No, I ain't got time for you. You know, it's going to be, again, that's going to be the great humbling. The great humbling is coming. Because uh, cause, cause men ain't forgotten. You know, men have not forgotten your treachery, you women. So when, when society crumbles, you know, a lot of you are going to try to be humble and come to men to help you out and blah, blah, blah. And that's when, that's when these men are going to really show their colors, all right? How they really feel about you, how you behave towards them. Furthermore, you got these men that are in prison. Some of these men are going to break out. And a lot of these men are in prison because you women put them there over child support and different, you know, uh, domestic quarrels and all that bullshit. So what do you think those men that are in prison... <laughs> What do you think those men are going to do when they break out of prison? They're going to come looking for you, and they're going to get their pound of flesh. I don't have to break it down to you what I mean by they're going to get their pound of flesh. So once again, this is the message for you women. The great humbling is coming. You've been warned. The great humbling is coming. You talk about how strong and independent you are. We'll see. We'll see if you're really strong. Now, the Bible calls you the weaker vessel. So that strong and independent nonsense is just that, nonsense. You're not strong, okay, and you're damn sure independent. You are dependent. You're dependent on the state. You're dependent on the so-called white man and his government-run programs. There are more government programs for you women than there are for men. Facts, okay? So what do you think all, when all these programs are done away with, when they're destroyed, now what? Who are you going to, like to quote uh, Robert De Niro from the movie uh, uh, Goodfellas, where are you going to run to? Where are you going to run to? Right? Something for you women to think about. Okay? And all that pride that you exuded to the man, all oh, that's going to go out the window. Now you're going to be begging men. And it doesn't matter what the man looks like. As long as he's a real man and he looks like he can take care of himself, you're going to want to get with him to take care of you. That's how desperate you're going to become. Right now, you women, you, you, you know, you have all these choices. That's why you're so proud, because you have all these choices. You don't want to get with this guy. You find something wrong with this guy, and you find something wrong with that guy. And you, man, them days are coming when you'll be happy to just get a man, period. A man to pay attention to you. Okay? <laughs> and honestly, I can't wait. You know, men like me, that's in the truth, we're just sitting back watching. We're like that coiled snake, you know? which is a symbol of wisdom, by the way, the snake, the serpent, right? The coiled serpent. We're like that coiled serpent. We're just sitting back watching. Yeah, we're just watching. Watching for when the fireworks begin, okay? Because it's going to come, man. And again, to end this video, the great humbling is coming for you. I'm going to use the phrase that King Richard said, the great humbling is coming for you women, man. The great humbling is coming. You've been warned, all right? Those days are coming when you'll just be happy just for any man to really talk to you and to, to, uh, to uh, uh, join you in, and take care of you, especially in the days that are coming. The scriptures speak about the time of trouble that the earth has never seen before. And like I said, you women are not strong. That's a delusion. Men are strong. Men are built for adversity. You women are not built for adversity. You, let me say that again. You women are not built for adversity. You can't, you can't deal with adversity. You know what proves that? The average woman, you go, all you have to do is go to her bathroom, look in her medicine cabinet. Man, you'll see all kind of fucking prescriptions. Why? Because she can't deal with reality. 
So she got to get some kind of s simple drug, some statin drug, to cope with reality. Even now, you go to my, uh, you go to my apartment, you go in my bathroom, look in my medicine cabinet. You're not going to find one, not one, all praises to you, how about you, Miao Shai, the water for that. You're not going to find one uh, bottle of uh, prescription pills in my medicine cabinet, not one. So uh, once again, all praises to you, how about you, Miao Shai, for that. Okay, but I, you women can't say that. You got all kind of prescription pills, Zoloft, all, all that Abilify, all that nonsense that you take just to cope with reality. But then you talk about how you're strong and independent. Give me a break. Stop it. Okay, you're not strong and you're not independent. And you're really going to find that out when all hell breaks loose. Because a real man will rise to the challenge. Especially a man that's rooted in this knowledge, this truth. A man that's rooted in the Yahabashim Yahushai where we get our strength. Okay? Well, there's a scripture where it says, We shall laugh at, at, at famine and destruction. Thou shall laugh. They ain't talking about you women. You women going to be too scared to laugh at famine and destruction. He's talking about men, real men, men of the Lord, men of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. As it is written, we shall laugh at destruction. Okay? So, there you go. So, in conclusion of the lesson, the great humbling is coming. All right? So, hopefully, you were edified when I ended there. And I say, once again, I say, Shalom to the Lord's elect. All praises and glory is due to you. How about Shimei Shai for giving us this knowledge, this truth? And you sisters, uh, you sisters that are doing the right thing, keep doing the right thing. And if you have a husband in the truth, you better look at that man as your savior, because indeed, uh, he he will be your savior. I know the Apostle Paul said, uh, uh, he said, uh, "How knowest thou, man, if thou shalt save thy wife?" But chances are, if your man is in the truth and he's doing the right thing by Yahweh Bashim Shai, and you're following that man, you're listening to that man, chances are you, you and that man are, are going to be delivered. And if you have children, your children is, 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 is going to be delivered. If, if, you know, chances are if you all in unison, okay? So on that note, I'll see you in the next video.